ready to play football at Legion Field in Birmingham. Well, I would say they're in good form. They're both loud. This is a good matchup. And Auburn coach Pat Dye figures one of the old basics will be one of the factors in deciding the outcome. I think that the kicking game is going to be a, a very important factor in the ball game, and particularly if the weather's bad, it could, you know, it could be the key in the ball game to play the specialty teams and the kickers. Now let's enlarge on some of the other key factors in this ball game with Tim Brent. Keith, over the last four years, this game has been decided by a total of eight points. As a matter of fact, over the last four years, Auburn has scored 84 points, Alabama has scored 84 points, and both teams have won twice. Again this year, the two teams match up extremely well. Both have good team speed, solid kicking games, and they have the two best runners in the Southeast Conference. Auburn has Brent Fullwood, Bobby Humphrey of Alabama. They are, in fact, right at the top of the SEC as runners. Now, some things we have to watch here this afternoon. Number one, Alabama's offensive line. It is really banged up. Case in point, quick guard Larry Rose had arthroscopic surgery on Monday. He will not play. Alabama center Wes Neighbors, he has a broken right hand. He will play. He'll snap the ball left-handed. And strong tackle Gary Otten is out with a hamstring pull. He is not expected to play either. So Ray Perkins obviously is concerned not only with the blocking schemes, but also with pass protection. The key when we have the ball and their defense is on the field, I think, is going to be how we pass protect. Uh, when we choose to throw the football because I think we're going to have to throw and I think we're going to have to be successful at throwing the football because they've only given up 2.7 average on the ground and uh, that's not a lot and uh, so as far as going into the game and thinking you can run the ball, run the ball, run the ball every down this is not one of those type games. This is a game where we're going to have to throw the ball and mix it in with a run and do it successfully. And that's not the only problem that Alabama will have today. I think they will have to pass and pass effectively to win, but they also have to stop Auburn's passing game. Auburn quarterback Jeff Berger has added a whole new dimension to this Tiger attack. He has an outstanding wide receiver and lawyer Tillman. Berger has passed effectively, and when they hook up, that just opens things up for the running back Brent Fulward. Now, if there is an advantage in depth, that has to go to Alabama. Alabama has an awful lot of players, and Pat Dye is well aware of the fact or the number of people that Alabama plays. The depth at linebacker would be the only place that I think it might be an advantage for them because uh, they play uh, 10, 11 linebackers and uh, they're all good and it really, it really enables them to keep those guys fresh and, and they are playing and they are just as quick and effective in the fourth quarter as they are in the first quarter and uh, that's got to be some advantage for them. Everybody is talking about everything seems to indicate another close game that will come down late into the fourth quarter. But to get to that fourth quarter, both teams have to play well early. Now, I see a tremendous opportunity here for All-American linebacker Cornelius Bennett of Alabama, maybe Kirk Crane, the linebacker for Auburn, to make a big play early, maybe set the tempo. I think that about 10 minutes into that first quarter, we'll have a pretty good indication of how this game's going to go, Keith. Well, it might be another game when Walter Mitty shows up, too. Remember, Gene Jokes did it last year as a freshman, ran for 192 yards. You never know in these traditionals. The series record looks this way. Alabama has a considerable edge. Bama won last year on that 52-yard field goal as time expired. Yeah, Alabama won the toss. They elect to take the kickoff in the second half, so Auburn will be receiving the opening kickoff. Van Tiffin to kick it. And Brent Fullwood, who is one of the outstanding running backs in the country, is deep to receive it. Oftentimes you don't see the big back, the key back, back there returning kicks. But in this one, Fullwood is there. And Tiffin hits it to Fullwood. We test him right off the bat. Down he goes hard at the 17-yard line, a driving tackle by quarterback Todd Richardson. And Auburn comes out with Berger at quarterback, A.G. at fullback, Gainus outside, Fullwood, the big tailback who can cut and slash and run with the best. And one of the most acrobatic, exciting young receivers in college football, Lawyer Tillman, figures to show up today. He's a Barishnikov in cleats is what he is, has tremendous concentration. He makes catches you don't believe. And never seems to lose sight of the football no matter how many defenders are around him. Auburn comes up with double wide Tillman and Gaines, and then they flex the tight end Walter Reeds to the top of the picture. Fullwood is deep in the eye. And Auburn goes from its 17 yard line. The toss sweep 
and waiting is Cornelius Bennett. Bennett moving back and forth in and out of the Alabama defensive scheme and he was right there and he decked Colwood for about a half a yard loss. The Auburn offensive front is anchored by Ben Tangirello. Everybody's All-American at 6'3", 270. They're big across the front, 255, 240, 270, 235, and 270. And Reeves the tight end, 6'4", and 240. Second down, 10 and a half, and Berger back to throw. Gets his pass away to the sidelines. Caught by Lawyer Tillman, just beyond the 30, and good for a first down. The defensive alignment for Alabama. The linebackers outside are very quick. You just saw what Cornelius Bennett can do. And I think inside today, Wayne Davis could have a big day because Auburn likes to attack you off the tackles. Well, Davis will have his hands full with Fullwood coming up the middle. Bennett, we said he had to make a big play early. He's already done that, but Tillman has figured in with that quick out pattern. And it's first down for the Tigers at their 31 as they send Gaines in motion. And Berger gives it to the fullback, A.G. And Tommy A.G. picks up two yards for Kurt Jarvis, a senior from Gardendale, Alabama, brings him down. All-American Ben Tamburello, and a fellow that I think deserves All-American mention, Kurt Jarvis, and their jawbone to jawbone. That may be a standoff all day. Tamburello, of course, the pros rate him as one of the best, if not the best, offensive lineman in the country. He's put on 63 pounds since coming to college. Was not heavily recruited. Now he's an All-American. Second down and eight from near the 33 for Auburn. Berger is back to throw. Gets it off over the middle. Pass is caught by Fullwood. The tailback and Fullwood's second effort will take him for a first down at the 43-yard line. This play is just set up nicely. Watch, they'll drive everybody deep. And Berger, with the play action now, will look deep and then stop and throw back underneath the fullwood. Here he is now on a quick release. He's the Iceman, the safety valve, because the pressure was coming from the outside. Boy, that's an ideal situation to get fullwood back in the secondary. But Alabama's running to the ball quite well, too. Got it deck the quarterback just as he released the ball. First down, Berger throwing. Has time. Good protection. Has to go again to the short man, fullwood. And Brett will be just across the 45 or a pickup of about two and a half to three yards. Starting to rain a little bit now. It rained hard yesterday and last night, but most of the day today it's been dry. Now we get sprinkles as the game gets underway. Ball is right on the 45. Making a two-yard pickup and call it second down and eight. A.G. is out of there. They've sent in another wide receiver now. Scott Bolton, number 24, joins the alignment. Gives them three wide people, and Berger goes back to throw on second down and long. Passes away. Pass caught by Walter Reeves, the tight end. The wrestling match in the spot is up at the 47-yard line, and that's where he'll be put down. First hit was by Randy Rockwell. Randy's not the biggest guy in town to play outside linebacker for you. 6'3", 200. He was giving away 40 pounds to Reeves, and it was a standoff there for a while. Game plan, obviously, now for Auburn is to go underneath, throw underneath the linebackers on good, safe, high percentage passes. Pat Sullivan has done a tremendous job with Berger. He's gained confidence. He's thrown effectively. He's in complete control. Third down and close to six. Fullwood hit at the line of scrimmage by Kurt Jervis. Jarvis won that struggle in the middle. He got away from Tamburello, and Fullwood had no chance, and it's fourth down, and the kicking team is in for the Tigers. Chris Knapp in to do the punting. Knapp on the year, averaging... Uh, no, it's Schulman, excuse me. Schulman doing the punting, averaging 44 yards per punt. Greg Richardson, dangerous wide receiver back for Alabama. And Schulman gets it away with some spin on it. Richardson drifts under it, and here he comes. Down he goes, right around the 22. Only a 33-yard punt as Craig Ogletree came downfield to get him. That ball had enough hang time that Alabama gave him no help. That graphic gives you some idea of how close this series has been between Ray Perkins and Pat Dye. And Alabama comes up with Mike Shula at quarterback. Allen and Humphrey lined up behind him. 
The wide people are Richardson and Al Bell, and Richardson goes in motion, and Humphrey cuts it over tackle and picks up a couple of yards out to about the 24. Shula and Bell, I think, Tim, have to be involved in some big plays today for Alabama. I got the uh, the impression yesterday, visiting with the coaches over in Tuscaloosa, that they're going to have a few new wrinkles today. We're going to see some new formations. They've had two weeks to prepare for this game. I wouldn't be surprised to see Albert Bell throw a pass today. Second down and eight for the Tide. And just outside the 20, there's that little delay. Humphrey popped it big, got a great block, and he's loose on the sidelines. And he is finally shoved out of bounds at the Auburn 32-yard line by Sean Morris. 48 yards. 1,267 yards for Bobby Humphrey this year. This from a young guy that had 7,000 yards as a high school player. You can only speculate how good he'll become. Watch the cut he makes inside. Goes back to the left, cuts across the grain. Now looks for a, a block. Now watch Richardson to the right of your screen, number 17 in red. Here he comes. He tries to throw the block to free him. Doug Allen, the fullback, carries from the 32 down to about the 29 of Auburn. Give you an idea of the kind of a player Humphrey is. There's your Auburn defensive alignment with Crane. Kurt Crane, who transferred to Auburn from Memphis State, has been a towering figure in their defensive front this year, along with Tracy Rocker, a big sophomore. What a great name for a defensive tackle, huh? Rocker. It is second down and seven for Alabama at the, nine, at the 29 of Auburn. And this is Bobby Humphrey. He's loose. He's down inside the five. First and goal, Alabama. And the Auburn four. I want you to watch something as you watch Bobby Humphrey run. He says Marcus Allen is the pro he likes to watch or emulate. And you can see some of Marcus Allen in it. See how he plants that foot, the balance, the low center of gravity? Now watch. He sees the end zone. He's just going to split the two defenders and try to sprint there. He now has 80 yards in five carries. And it's first and goal, Alabama. Humphrey again. To about the two. Picked up a couple of yards on that carry. So this possession has been all Humphrey. Brought down by Kurt Crane and Nate Hill for the Tigers. There's Pat Dye. Ray Perkins foul on the other side. I'll tell you what's impressive about this drive is the fact that Alabama is moving against Auburn's defense, which is number one in the conference. It allows less than 10 points a game and 98 yards rushing. Humphrey cuts it back and will go down about the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down and goal for the Crimson Tide. And Al Bell is trotting onto the field now. He was out of there. Whitehurst was in. And Bell is obviously bringing the play. Bell's that big play type of guy, too. You know, every time he touches the ball, he almost gets a first down or a, He's a replacing touchdown. replacing Humphrey. That's an unusual switch, isn't it? So Doug Allen stays in as the lone remaining back. Bell is in it wide. Out. On third and goal from near the three. Shula back. Throws it in the corner. Touchdown. Tight end. Angelo Stafford. for the extra point. Van Tiffin trails Tim Lasher of Oklahoma by one now. He has 134 consecutive PAT. Lasher has 135, which is the NCAA record. So Van Tiffin has a chance today to pass Tim Lasher. Here's the touchdown again to the left side. Stafford is the tight end. It's a crossing pattern, not a pick, a crossing pattern. But he's six foot four, isolated on Crane, the linebacker, and just goes up and plucks it out of the air. 
right, watch him now, the top of your screen. you see him, here comes the linebacker, Crane, on it. Now the two will cross, he'll come free, pass Crane, right there. And the ball was perfectly thrown. Talking about extra points, too, Keith. Alabama now has kicked 192 consecutive extra points. That is an NCAA record. Tide hasn't missed an extra point since 1981. Two minutes and 53 seconds to play in the first quarter. And Alabama breaks on top, seven to nothing. It was an absolute tip that uh, Alabama was going to throw the ball when uh, Al Bell goes in to replace Bobby Humphrey. Humphrey did most of the work in that possession to get in the end zone. But then they crossed up the Auburn defensive people by going to the tight end, Angelo Stafford. That's James Joseph, number 10, the deep man, and the steady little drizzle continues to fall. He feels it and drops it at the 10, and then finds some daylight and gets a good return on it back to about the 27. Humphrey had 78 of Alabama's 82 yards in that touchdown drive. 7-0, Alabama lead, Auburn's ball. First down, there, 27, Berger pitches back to Fullwood. You don't think that man can't run? Look at that. He was a half a step from being long gone all the way to the Alabama 41-yard line where Robinson and Good brought him down. I'll tell you what, the senior from St. Cloud, Florida, has tremendously quick and decisive instincts, good vision, and escape quality, which frees him up from one-arm tackles. Look at him break through there. Now he, too, tries to split the two defenders. A 31-yard run for Fullwood. And the Tigers are on the tied side. Handed inside to the fullback. Not much there for Tommy Agee. Maybe a yard and a half as he gets just over the 40. Greg Gilbert, the inside linebacker, made the tackle. Driving 82 yards for a go-ahead touchdown. Auburn trying to respond now. The Tigers were knocking a little while ago, and Berger threw an interception. Second down and eight. Berger back throwing again. Gaines is on the wide side. Go underneath to Fullwood. And Fullwood trying to hammer that cornerback over there. Bangs into, well, actually, it wasn't a cornerback. It was Rockwell, an outside linebacker who had dropped into the short zone, and he's held up a yard short of his first down. Rockwell making the tackle. Pat Dye was asked recently to compare Brent Fullwood and Bo Jackson. And Pat said, Bo's an outfielder. Brent's a running back. Third and a yard. They give it to the big man, Reggie Ware, in at fullback, a 245-pound junior, and he's following his line surge for what appears to be a first down. A minute and seven remaining in the first quarter. Alabama jumping on top, 7-0. Tim Jesse and Vincent Harris now come into the Auburn backfield as Pat Dye shuffles his players. Keep them fresh. Both sides figure this is going to be a fourth quarter game. Back goes Berger, throws the ball. Down first down. Tim Jesse out of the backfield pulls it in at about the 25 with Cornelius Bennett and Greg Gilbert bringing him down. Now let's join Al Troutwig. Well, Keith, when Auburn gets on defense, they'll be without for now number 20, Sean Morris. He hyperextended his knee. They've taped it up, but he's pretty gimpy along the sidelines and pretty angry about not being able to take part right now in this game. He's been tossing his helmet and walking around and limping. We may see him again, but I just don't know how effective he'll be. Back to you. Thank you. Inside goes the fullback, Vincent Harris. And Harris is going to have another Auburn first down. And they're finding daylight in the middle now as he gets inside the 20. Games like this with the rivalry as it is, those injuries don't seem to hurt as badly. They have a way of healing quickly, and a lot of those guys come back into the ball game, and I suspect we'll see Morris again quickly. Vincent Harris is taken out of the ball game in a hurry and gets a chewing out on the sidelines because he got a little hot and was gesturing. This is not <laughs> the time nor the place for that. Got to control you. You play in controlled anger in a circumstance like this as time runs out in the first quarter of play. Packed house, Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. And after one period, and a very quick period, Alabama 7, Auburn nothing. We go to the second quarter of play. The Crimson Tide 7-0. Auburn's ball first down at the Alabama 18. Morris is still trying to shake off a hyperextended knee. 
He pitches it back to Auburn. Berger has A.G. and Fullwood behind him. Pitches the ball to Fullwood. Cuts it back. Down. Touchdown, Auburn. You know, all the great Auburn backs in the past, guys like James and Bo Jackson and Joe Cribbs and William Andrews, and there have been some great ones, Keith. Fullwood is probably the best breakaway threat they've ever had. The extra point kick was good by Chris Knapp, and so Auburn responds and ties it as Fullwood goes 18 yards. In Auburn's scoring drive, Brett Fullwood had 57 of the 73 yards. 50 rushing, 7 receiving. In Alabama scoring drive, Humphrey had 78 of 82. 57 he had on that drive. He needs just 69 yards rushing today to move ahead of James Brooks in the second place on the all-time season rushing list. Bo Jackson, of course, holds the record. And the Tigers now will kick it off. Chris Knapp kicking to Bobby Humphrey. So the two great running backs both stood tall in the early going. This one will be taken by Doug Allen, a fullback, back inside the five, and Allen gets the boom lured on him at about the 21-yard line. <laughs> Alabama takes the ball at the 20, first down for the Tide, give it to Humphrey, and he'll pick up three yards on that carry. Brought down by Craig Ogletree, a freshman from Barnesville, Georgia. Auburn has been inside the Alabama 20-yard line now three times in this ball game, and they've scored only seven points. You cannot waste opportunities in a game like this. <laughs> Bell and Richardson are the wide people on second down and seven. Shulip gives it to Humphrey again, and he gets outside. Caught from behind by number 90, Brian Smith. Smith at 6'6", 240, a linebacker. Got him by the coattail and slowed him up, and he was brought down. But he's got a first down for Alabama up around the 37. Teddy Little Drizzle continues to fall and get kind of wet now. sidelines too high intended for Greg Richardson he was scanning the field and looked back and saw Richardson and by then there was coverage there as well and Mike may have just thrown it away it's been somewhat of a frustrating year for Mike they were cruising along undefeated 7-0 when they lost to Penn State two weeks later they lost to LSU and he's thrown 14 interceptions this year and only 11 touchdowns it's unusual to see him throw more interceptions than touchdowns. He makes very few mistakes until this year. He hadn't played terribly well since the Penn State game. Penn State handled him in that ball game. Second down and ten. Pressure coming. Shula gets it off. Underneath. Pass caught by Bobby Humphrey. And Humphrey is hit and knocked ahead for at least a yard. But it is short of the first down. Craig Ogletree was the man firing up the middle, forcing Shula to hurry to play. Ball is marked at the 43. Well, they need just about four yards on third down. to the sidelines. Pass good to Greg Richardson. Good for a first down at the Auburn 43. Chip Powell made the tackle. Let's watch Richardson here at the bottom of the screen. You'll see him drive the defensive back off. Watch this. See, it looks like he's going to go on a fly pattern and break it long. 
Well, the bait was taken by Chip Powell, the cornerback, and then it was just a hitch by Richardson, and he came back for the ball, and then Powell had to recover. Powell does not have great speed. He's got maybe 4'9 speed playing in that secondary. From the Auburn 43, first down, Alabama, 7-7 seven, seven tie. And Shula again throwing on first down to the sideline. And it is off the head. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Somebody got a big hand up and changed the direction of the ball just enough. You know, Shula's going to have to look deep soon. He's got to set Richardson on Powell. Anytime he's got Richardson on Powell, one-on-one, -on -one, he's got to take him deep. Powell can't run with Richardson. It's a mismatch. Second down and ten. down Alabama at the Auburn 23. Humphrey now on 10 carries, 119 yards. Watch Humphrey right here, a little delay. All right, now right, he'll stop, he'll shop, he'll see the hole, now he'll cut back to the outside. Once he gets out here, 17 Richardson's now lined up to throw a block. See 17 there? And he sets it loose. What a day he's having, Humphrey. Call it the 24. It's just inside the 24 hash mark. Jelks is in the backfield. Humphrey gets a breather. Jelks with the ball. A hard couple of yards. Robert Goff, a junior out of Bradenton, Florida, made the tackle for Auburn. And now Humphrey comes back. Boy, what a combo. Humphrey goes out, Jelks comes in. You know, we saw Jelks run for 192 yards and a touchdown against Auburn last November 30th. He's a great player, too. Humphrey is in. The lone back. Look out for Bell. He hasn't seen the ball yet. Jula looking for him, can't find him, throws underneath to Humphrey, and he is dragged down at about the 19 by Edward Phillips. One of the inside linebackers for the Tigers. And now Doug Allen comes in at fullback. And Angelo Stafford, the tight end, comes out. So that sets up a little different offensive alignment for Alabama. But Ray Perkins admitted yesterday that they have put in some new wrinkles. I see one here. Third and five. That's a sweep. Old fashioned power football. Looked just like a single wing coming around there, and he's got a first down as he punches it down to about the 12. Kurt Crane made the tackle for the Tigers. How about that? That's fairly healthy, isn't it? 11 and a half yards of carry. Not bad. Six minutes, 50 seconds to go, first half. First down, Alabama, Auburn 12. That's Humphrey in motion. He will throw it. Into the end zone, no. Too high, intended for Howard. Oh, the tight end. It was a little crowded where he threw that ball. It sure was, and he walked away shaking his head. I don't think he really should have thrown the ball. Mike, I think, agrees with me after seeing the result. In this possession for Alabama, 69 yards so far, 11 plays to cover that much real estate. Old friend Dirk Russell, Georgia Southern team winning today. Gives the ball to Doug Allen. And Allen will take it to about the seven. That's a five-yard pickup where Kevin Porter brings him down. Doug Allen sat out a couple of games mid-season with a knee injury. But we talked to him in the dining hall one afternoon. He says he's rebuilt it. It's stronger than ever, and he feels pretty good. Ball at the Auburn seven.
Bueller throws, Humphrey, touchdown, Alabama. Penalty flag. No, there should have been a penalty flag. Keith nope. is what I'm saying. There should have been. There was a pick play that's illegal, and it wasn't called. It looked like a pick play, I'll tell you that. But it looked like a classic pick, didn't it? Arthur Johnson and Chip Powell both got picked off. Watch the outside receiver now. Here comes Humphrey. He'll go into the flats. Everybody gets caught in the middle there by Bell. Seeing right away. See the hands pointing. They're saying, hey, boo, he can't do that. He cut me off. It's a screen. It's a pick. All right, Van Tiffin now trying to tie Tim Lasher with 135 consecutive PATs, and he's done it. <laughs> Goes to the lead, 14 to 7. When I saw that pick, I just figured there was going to be a penalty flag somewhere in the crowd, but it didn't come. It's the offensive man's responsibility to get out of the way, to avoid contact. Here he takes out both men. That is an obvious pick. No call. Five minutes and 51 seconds to go in the first half. 14 7 time. Every year going into the season, you talk about the pick play and you expect it to be enforced, but you very seldom see it flagged. Short kickoff, high hanger, picked up by James Joseph for Auburn. And James gets back across the 25 to about the 27. Bobby Humphrey, in catching that touchdown pass, has a new Alabama single season scoring record of 104 points. With that touchdown, he matches the record set by Johnny Musso with 16 touchdowns. My information Actually, that doesn't qualify, though. That's rushing touchdown. Yeah. That's... Oh, well. I'm 27. Record. 27. Yard line. And they'll make the snap, Auburn will, and start the clock and end the first half of play with a score. Alabama, 14. Auburn, 7. Bobby Humphrey has 176 yards on 16 carries for Alabama. We go to the second half of play. 14 to 7. Alabama leading and Auburn kicks off to the Crimson Tide and it is a short hanging kick taken on the sidelines at about the 17 by Doug Allen. And Allen comes back across the 30 to the 31. And there they'll go to work. Trotwick. Keith, you know, the mascot situation for these two teams is quite confusing. You have an elephant is the mascot of the Crimson Tide, and a war eagle is the mascot of the Auburn Tigers. The war eagle, though, is a very, very important missing element in this game. You see War Eagle 5 died just before Auburn began this season. It took him quite a long time to replace it with War Eagle 6. They've been training War Eagle 6, but he's not ready to face these crowds yet, and so War Eagle is not here today. Up to you. We'll introduce you to the Falcon next week at the Air Force Academy. <laughs> Bobby Humphrey carries over right tackle and picks up a couple of yards out to about the 33. Here are the halftime stats. As soon as you go to him, look at Alabama. 197 rushing yards. 176 of those come from Bobby Humphrey with five runs over 20 yards. Second down and eight. Gives the ball to Doug Allen, the fullback. And Allen crosses the 35 to the 36, where he is thrown down. Fullwood is having what you would consider a good day until you contrast what Brent's done with what Humphrey's done. A couple of big plays called back by penalty, too, for Auburn. Two interceptions, of course, for Shula have been critical. It's third down, four and a half for the Crimson Tide from their 36. gets his pass oh, off. The pass is complete. The hump. No, it is not. Incomplete up at the 40. When he came down, hit the ground, ball popped loose. And so Alabama will have to punt. I don't think he would have had the first down even if he'd held the ball. Trey Gaines will go deep for Auburn, and Chris Moore will punt. Chris has hit it twice today, 41 and 39 yards. Good kick. 
Davis backs up. Now retreats all the way to the 15. Squares up and comes back up to about the 25. 47-yard hanging punt by Chris Moore. The wind has not been a factor much, but it's kicking up a little bit right now. Well, I guarantee you that'll be a lively household for years to come. <laughs> Especially on this day. It is first down Auburn, just short of their own 25. A.G. and Fullwood behind Berger. A little mix up, Fullwood late getting the ball from Berger. And we'll pick up about one yard on the carry where Kurt Jarvis nails him down. Jarvis has had a big day in the trenches. Auburn actually has had better field position starting these drives than has Alabama. But you see the results. Throw over the middle, incomplete, intercepted. Freddie Robinson, number 21, the left corner. The ball was overthrown to Lawyer Tillman. Alabama has effectively taken Tillman out of the ball game so far. And Robinson makes a juggling interception at the Auburn 48. The old tip drill, they're going after that big receiver again, Lawyer Tillman. It's play action. Now watch Cornelius Bennett to the left of your screen. He's coming back. Berger can feel that pressure. Throws it high off the fingertips, and here's the tip drill. Look how Freddie Robinson comes back and gets possession of that football. So it's an opportunity for Alabama now. Starting at the Auburn 48, Shula gives it to Doug Allen to the 45. Allen has most of that tackle for Auburn. He had eight in the first half. And you see now the Tigers with two turnovers in the ball game, which is very unusual. They're plus 21 in the giveaway takeaway column. They send Bell and Richardson both now to the top of the picture. But a different alignment. Doug Allen carries it to the 40 and they'll be looking at third down about two and a half as Kurt Crane and Ed Phillips make the tackle for the Tigers just starting the third quarter Alabama getting this opportunity as a result of an overthrown pass by Berger that was intercepted watch Crane reacting to the football Alabama loaded up all the heavyweights down here on the left side and then went back to the short side of the field with the fullback get a chance take a look at Big Joe King over 300 pounds now. This is Humphrey. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. Number 99, Nate Hill from LaGrange, Georgia. Brings him down for the loss. And brings in the Alabama punter. I say watch King that time. He's over 300 pounds, but Nate Hill ran right by him. Nobody back deep for Auburn yet. Now Trey Gaines comes hustling in from the sidelines and stands back at the 10. No pressure on Moore as he tries to knuckle it up there and hang it. And he is successful forcing a fair catch by Trey Gaines at the Auburn 14-yard line. A 27-yard punt, but if you just look at the yardage on that one, it would be misleading. It was most efficient. All right, the Auburn band whooping it up on the sidelines, trying to generate some of that energy out onto the field of their football team, trailing 14-7. to They start this possession at their own 14. In the first half, they had good field position most of the time. Berger pitches to Fullwood. He took that first hit, kept his balance, turned around. Ball comes loose. Alabama's recovered a fumble. And it's three turnovers. Three for Auburn. Cliff Thomas came out of there with it. An old second effort. Thomas came out of it, but the play was made by Cole. Tommy Cole, the defensive tackle. Boy, what a play he made. So Alabama now with a golden opportunity to increase their lead, getting possession of the ball at the 
Auburn 16 yard line. Here it is, watch 51, Tommy Cole. He's got containment. He sits, he sits, comes in and makes a good hit. And Shula gives to Humphrey, and Humphrey gets to maybe the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Now Doug Allen comes trotting on the field. As Humphrey will try to get his hat back on. Bobby grew up just across the street from Legion Field. I mean, literally across the street. Used to sell Cokes just so he could get in here and watch the game. Okay, the hat's in place, and it's second down and ten. Humphrey's going right. And Auburn handles it as he cuts it back inside for a couple of yards. Ron Stallworth and Kurt Crane. And Crane's tackle totals now getting into the double figures. You know what's great about that story about growing up right across the street and selling Cokes here at Legion Field is the fact that he used to always ask for the upper deck. He'd sell the Cokes in the upper deck so he could, he could see the game. He said if he sold them down near the bottom, he'd get tangled up and couldn't see through all the people and the players. <laughs> Third down and seven. Shula goes to the tight end, Howard Cross. And Cross can't come up with it. Howard comes up with a little tipper as he got tangled up with Andre Bruce. Everything Bruce did was legal. Now Van Tiffen will get a call on fourth down. He'll put his tee at the 19. 29 yard. 29-yard field goal try. His first try today. Knapp missed one from 29. When you look for kicking records in the Alabama library, you find uh, Van Tippen's name all over it. I think they're short of man, aren't they? There's number 63 finally <laughs> getting out on the field and in position. Now they've got 11. And Van Tippen's kick is good. It didn't appear to have all that much authority on it, but it's through the upright, and it's 17-7 Alabama. Ten-point lead for the Tide now. That time remaining in the third quarter, 9:03, and Van Tiffin getting ready to kick it off. 13 out of 16 in field goals this year. He's going to kick it to James Joseph, deep for Auburn. There's some wind down on the field now. He's catching the ball, holds it up. Joseph takes it at the 14, pops it to the sidelines. And brings it back across the 35 to the 36. And here's Al Trotwig. Steve, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, the pit band taught me how to play the trumpet. I'm expanding my horizons with the band from Auburn, saxophone. Can you hold that? Thank you. Ready? Like it <laughs> Auburn goes to work first down. Tim Jesse is the tailback. He's got the ball, bounces outside, breaks into the clear, and was close to going all the way. Ricky Thomas brought him down. So they put in some fresh legs, and it produces a 19-yard gain. I want you to watch 55 in red, though. That's Derek Thomas, the outside linebacker. He gets hung up with number 86. See that right there? That's Walter Reeves, the tight end. They get tied up, which leaves the corner open. And by that time, it looks like it's too late for Cooper, the cornerback, number 20, to come up and make the play. Benson Harris is in at fullback. He has the ball, goes banging up the middle, and picks up five yards. Yeah. What about Stallworth? And the knee angle, what was it? Al Trotwig. Okay, if I just went by Ron Stallworth, the doctor checked out the knee to make sure it wasn't moving unnaturally. He looked up and told Ron, it looks pretty good. Why don't we tape it and give it a shot? And that's what they're going to do. Thank you. Second down and five with a minute. And 12. No in the third period. As Tommy Agee comes back in at fullback for the Tigers. And Jeff Berger lost the ball coming off the snap and covers it. He's a junior out of Cedartown. Pretty good size, six footer, 205. I'll tell you something else that may have an impact on this ball game. Cornelius Bennett, you know, he missed the first two games with a badly pulled right hamstring. 
and that thing is taped heavily right now. It looks like the right hamstring is causing him some problems again. He's trying to go, but he has been slowed. See the tape? Hamstrings take a long time to heal. Boy, they are tough. Third down and seven. Berger's pass is away, and Jesse loses his footing and goes down. And a penalty flag. Let's see what we've got here. Cornelius Bennett was the man putting the pressure on the quarterback, Berger. We got a personal foul call against Alabama. They're going to say he was spearing, using his helmet as a weapon. It's the first down. Big penalty, 15 yards. Out to just about the 49-yard line. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. First down. Here it comes right here. Here's the end of the play. They called that spearing. Didn't even make contact. If he had made contact, it would have been spearing because he did come in head first, but it looked like he missed it. Most penalized team in the history of the school of Alabama. First down, Berger gets some protection this time. Throws complete down around the 34-yard line to Lawyer Tillman. And he had to drill that one between defenders, the second catch by Tillman. Watch Lawyer Tillman. He's 6'4", 218 pounds. Now, he leads the SEC in average yards per catch with an incredible average of 21 yards through 10 games. Six touchdowns. Just a quick out pattern, but he makes a big target. And it's first down Auburn now at the Alabama 34 at eight seconds to play in the third quarter. That goes down the middle to Walter Reeves, the tight end, and he picks up eight. But that catch in the third quarter is over. So we've got 15 minutes to play in the Iron Bowl in Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. Who's the strongest in the fourth quarter? A 17-7 ball game. Alabama leads and Auburn now. Second down and three. Give it to Fullwood. He pops out of there. He's on the way. Touchdown. Seven carries. He gained only 10 yards with a fumble, and all of a sudden he explodes. And Auburn's back in the ball game. Naps extra point kick is good. This is the 10th rush of the game over 18 yards. It's just the sweep. But watch the cut he makes right here. He sees a hole that wasn't even there yet. Anticipation. Gets a block and cuts to the outside. Then he breaks that tackle from Kendrick, the free safety, and out races the cornerback to the, the goal line. Here it is again. Watch the cutback. See, there's no hole there right now, but he's going that direction anyway. And then gets his block from aging. And then watch this. Just It's a sprint to the corner, and Fullwood makes it. This game's so much like last year's, it's scary. Auburn's two touchdowns at the ball game. First play of the second quarter, and now the first play of the fourth quarter. And they have one wiped out by a penalty. It's 17 to 14 now, with 14 53 to go. Same story, just told a different way. Last year was Bo Jackson. This year it's Fullwood. People forget Fullwood was the leading rusher for this team in 1984. It wasn't Bo Jackson. That will kick off, and Humphrey will return it for Alabama. I think Bobby lost sight of the ball. And had it bounce right in front of him and picks it up and comes back to about the 25. Alabama starts just short of the 25. First down, leading now by three, and pitch it to Bobby Humphrey. Coming around the corner. He's tough, but he's carried the ball a lot today. 
Somebody has to get to the Auburn outside people. They've got to tell them right now, with 14-39 left in the ball game, you've got to start closing that down. You can't let them have the corners. Take that step across, inside out leverage, force it back into where the pursuit is. You let Humphrey outside, he'll kill you. Bobby comes out now and Jokes goes in, replacing him. A sophomore from Gatston. Speedster, first down Alabama. Just over the 35. Inside, Doug Allen. And Allen is close to another first down. He bounced up around the 46. But they won't give him that much. They'll give him the 44. Again, I focus your attention to Alabama's rushing yardage. 234 rushing yards. That's been one key. And then the turnovers, of course. Auburn's had three of them. While Alabama's had four penalties for 46 yards. Second down, two for the Tide. They're on 44. Goes for the first down and looks to have it as Kurt Crane grabs him as he goes by, throws him down. Crane went to Memphis State. He is from Birmingham, transferred down to Auburn, and is the team's leading tackler. He had an amazing 26 tackles against Georgia. Been in double figures in tackles eight times in 10 games. I'll tell you how active he is. And this is Jokes. Pops out of there, and he is on his way. Three. Kevin Porter saved the TD for Auburn. And there's a penalty flag. Could have somebody pushing in the back. Nope, it's a clip. And it's against Alabama. Ooh, that hurts. That not only hurts, but it negates a tremendous play by Wes Neighbors, the center. He's playing with a broken hand. He, he had the block that sprung him loose. the guy right in front of number 11. It's West Neighbors, 54. He fires off. Now watch him go after the linebacker here. See 54? And here comes the runner, Jelks. West Neighbors. West Neighbors threw the block that just sprung him. Well, the ball on the clip comes back to the Auburn 18, where it is first down for Alabama. Richardson was the one with the clip. Humphrey's back in. The tailback has the ball. And a good defensive play by Kurt Crane. Crane firing through the crack. Took the legs away from Humphrey. Let's see if we can see the clip that negated the run by Jelks. Here it is, the top of your screen. Richardson, the push, the push in the back. He'll have a yard on that carry. It'll be second down and nine at the Auburn 17. You know what makes Crane's play so spectacular that time? It was the fact that he was the guy Wes Neighbors took out about 20 yards to play before, and he came right back to make a big play. Second down from the 22. Shula to Richardson. Dropped it. <laughs> the hardest ball Mike's thrown all day and he hit him right in the hands with it very good to pull it in 17-14 Alabama by three and 12-01 to play boy he had him wide open too like in basketball wide open 10-foot jumper say it's the most difficult shot when you're not covered Auburn short a man on defense I think Schuler rolling around Keeps it and is knocked out of bounds at the 21. Now, <laughs> two Auburn men went off. One came back, and I don't know whether they were at 10 or whether they wound up with 12, but apparently nobody had time to count them, so there's no flag. There's only 10 out there right now. Van Tiffin is in to try a 39-yard field goal. He hit one from 29. From this distance, he's three for three for the year. He's 13 out of 16 in field goals this season. Plenty of leg. And no good. He missed it. And the Auburn folks.
folks take heart with 11 minutes and 47 seconds to play in the game. Well, there are all the numbers that matter right now. Auburn has the ball first down at their own 22-yard line. Their two touchdowns have come after drives of 73 and 79 yards. This got pass all over it. To the sidelines and caught out of bounds by Trey Gaynor, so is it good? They're going to give it to it. Up at the... One guy standing on 27 and one to the 26. Which one is correct? 26. Chris Good was the Alabama man trying to defend on the play, and it, it was very close. In college football, remember, you only have to have one foot down. Trey Gaynor's 19. He was close. Here comes the ball. Here's the pressure. We'll get back to that. That's the first catch of the day, the first time Gaynor's has seen the ball. It's second down and six. This is Fullwood bouncing outside. He's going to have his first down caught from behind by Wayne Davis. Otherwise, he might still be running. He was twisted. Meantime, you've got 9.15 to play in a three-point ball game, and it's third and ten for Auburn. Pressure coming. Good protection. Burgess passes away for Tillman. He's got it. Inside the 25. Down to the 21. He caught it between double coverage. You're right, it was double coverage. Watch Tillman. Now, we told you that he made acrobatic catches. Barishnikov and Cleats, six foot four. This time, it's concentration all the way. The ball is well thrown. Here's the coverage. Two men there, and he still goes up and makes the catch and comes down with it. Oh, Shannon and Robinson had him fairly well covered. First down, Auburn, Alabama, 21. And Jesse drops the ball, fumbles it away, and finally recovers it back on the 31. So the pitch back to Jesse gets away, and Auburn's lucky to keep the ball. This is two weeks in a row we've seen teams that don't put the ball on the ground very often not being able to hold on to it. Now, this club is plus 21 in a giveaway takeaway ratio, which means they don't fumble it very often. He never really had it. Couldn't well, he, get control of it. No, never did. And then Thomas banged into him, and he almost gave it up for good. Bullwood is back in. Sorty and all. Berger throwing. Throws for Tillman. Intercepted at the four-yard line. A fight for the ball, and Kermit Kendrick comes down with it. Berger didn't get enough on it. He throws it a little higher. Tillman may have pulled it in, but this time Kermit Kendrick out fights him for the ball. He shouldn't have thrown it, though. Watch Tillman now. Tillman will roll in a double coverage again. It's zone. See the linebacker now stay in his zone area, but now you go into the safety in the cornerback. Look at this now. There's no seam there. His ball should not have been thrown. The man to go to that time was underneath. It was Fullwood, who was the safety valve, 10 yards over the middle. He was wide open. Third interception and fourth turnover for Auburn. Coaches, Pat Dye on the left, Ray Perkins on the right. Auburn's balloon now a little limp after that turnover. They're fourth. And Mike Shula takes possession at quarterback as the tide moves it from the four yard line. And Doug Allen quickly picks up the seven out to 11, where Kurt Crane brings it down. The interception, I think, was just a lack of patience. They tried to go for too much. You see Fullwood come through the line there, and he's wide open now. C-22 there, not a soul around him. Instead, Berger tries to go deep to Tillman. And there's nowhere to throw it. Second down and three as they got seven yards on the carry by the fullback, and he's got about seven more as he comes up to the 18 and picks up the first down before Kevin Porter brings him down. So they're grinding it out now and getting out in some operating room. Allen with 68 yards on 13 carries, and next week to the Rocky Mountains we go. Well, BYU and Air Force. BYU playing at San Diego State tonight. San Diego State at 7-3. Their losses to UCLA, Stanford, and Air Force. 
BYU trying to get another championship in the Western Athletic Conference. First down for Alabama. Here's the pitch to Humphrey. This time they handle him as he tries to sweep it out there. Benji Rowland and Kevin Porter. If Alabama wins this ball game, they will tie with LSU for the conference championship. But LSU beat Alabama. And unless the Bayou Bengals should lose to Tulane, the general feeling seems to be the Super Bowl is going to pick LSU. Tracy Rockers limping around down there for Auburn. Auburn's defensive tackle number 74. He's been fairly quiet today, you know that? He's hurting right now. I'd run right at him. Humphrey cuts it back into the middle on second down and eight, and we'll pick up a yard or so. And the clock shows six minutes and ten seconds. Did you see who made that tackle? It Walker. was Tracy Rocker. That's right. And now Humphrey has 200 yards in the ball game. Watch Rocker. He's limping, obviously. Even when he's running here down the line of scrimmage, he's limping, but he gets there, makes the play, and he does it with some authority. Ball is at the 22, where it is third and seven. Big play here. The Auburn's to get the ball back. They hand it off on a little delay to Bobby Humphrey, and the Packers handle him at the 25, and it'll bring up fourth down. Auburn has blocked one punt this year. It's amazing to me, though. The, you know, the, the man whose teams block more punts than anybody is Bobby Bowden. I mean, he's always got somebody that for somehow can get free. He's got the speed. Yep. All right. Moore gets it out of there after dropping it and gets a pretty good punt out of it. Trey Gaines trying to return it and can't do it. Just never could get enough help back there. And Carlos Robinson, number 25, grabbed him around the collar and brought him down. Chris Moore made it exciting. He dropped that snap. And Chris Moore played this game last year with a broken leg. Yeah, he did. Ball is placed at the 33. Not bad field position with four minutes and 54 seconds to play. As Auburn comes out with A.G. and Fullwood, Berger at quarterback, Gaines and Tillman wide. Fullback, A.G. And Tommy hasn't found a whole lot of daylight in the middle of the Alabama defense today. Picks up about three there. Second down and seven. Make it four as they place the ball at the 37. Auburn trails by three. And the Tigers missed a 29-yard field goal earlier in the ball game. This is Fullwood. And he may have lost some of his sharpness with that injury to his knee because he didn't seem to be able to plant that left leg that time and make the cut. And so Kirk Jarvis and Greg Gilbert just nailed it. It's third and one at five. Holwood's going for it. And he may have it. He may very well have it at just beyond the 43. Jarvis on the tackle for Alabama. Well, you're right, though. He's not running with the authority he had earlier. this now. The play is set up nicely with the delay. Here comes Fullwood. He almost slowed down, yeah. but he got the first. He felt the hit coming, I think, and uh, wanted the leverage to get the yardage without taking all the pressure on that left leg. First down, nonetheless. Got it again. Dodges a man in the backfield. Two, actually three. And finally steps out of bounds after picking up a couple of yards. There were three Alabama players that had a shot at him. And they didn't get it. Give him a yard. Second down and nine. And Tim Jesse comes in, replacing Fullwood. Give him a little breather. Well, when Fullwood goes out, they like to pass 70% of the time. Fullwood had only two catches coming into this game. 
Berger's pass is down the middle to the tight end to midfield and falls to the 49. And they'll need three and a half yards for the first down. Three minutes to play in the game. That's Pat Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback at Auburn, sending their signaling the plays in to Berger. Pat was in the insurance business for a long time and then came back to, as a quarterback coach this year. Now on third down and three and a half, you've got Ware, A.G., and Jesse in the backfield, and this is Berger with a ball. And Berger is at the line of scrimmage, and that'll do it. And now Auburn's got to go on fourth down, I think, with two and a half minutes to play. line caught by all reliable Trey Gaines. Perhaps the most consistent receiver there. He was looking first at the tight end, but the tight end was covered. He came down and hooked. So here comes Trey Gaines right behind the tight end. And what a catch he makes. Boy, he extended, caught it the only way he could, down on the ground and pulled it in. His second catch of the game. Fullwood checks back in. First down, just short of the Alabama 40, and Fullwood with a hole on the right side. Bucks it, keeps going, down to the 20. Oh, I tell you, if he's hurt, he's got more gizzard than any man I know, because he went slamming over that right side, and I thought he was going to go all the way. You talk about explosion. This is it bounces off people like a ping pong ball. First down. All at the 21, handed inside. And down to the 10-yard line goes Tommy Agee. Agee with his biggest run of the day. And it comes at a crucial time. And speaking of time, 1.28 to play in the game. 17-14 Alabama by three. Gaines is out of the lineup now, and Vincent Harris comes in, A.G. leaves. Jesse and Harris are the running backs, and this is Harris, and he'll have two, maybe three yards, maybe the seventh. It's pretty late getting him into the ball game. I don't see how he can know what the step count was understand why they're taking so much time here down to 53 seconds waiting for a play well it looked confused on the sidelines to me now here comes Fullwood he's too late he can't come in second down on the eight they run a reverse it's Laurier Tillman carrying the ball good cut touchdown Auburn This acrobatic ability. Watch this. Gets a great kick out from Vixen Jones, 57, right there. He cuts inside. That was the cut that made it. And then go for the end zone. What if they had called the timeout? What if Brent Fullwood had come in? Well, it's 21-17. 
Alabama with only one timeout remaining. 32 seconds to play in the ball game. And if you're covering kicks, this guy can break your day. He averages 26 yards of return. High hanger. They put it in the air and kick it right to Humphrey at the six. And he comes back to the 31. And the clock shows 27 seconds. It's about three plays. I can't believe they Maybe kicked four. it to him. Keep it on the ground. Squib it. Don't allow a return. I would have tried to squib, I believe. Well, I tell you what. Auburn gets away with one here. Total yep. confusion. Fullwood comes off. Fullwood goes off. Tillman tries to call timeout. Nobody sees him. They finally run the play, and he scores. He's going to be a great player. Right. Well along already on first down. Mike Shula back. Gets his pass off down the middle for Al Bell. And it is knocked away by Arthur Johnson. Second down and 10 and 22 seconds to play. 21-17, Auburn. Shula's longest pass today is only 14 yards. You know they're going to go to Bell. He's their big play guy. He drives down and tries to come across the middle, but this is great coverage here. Look at this. Timed perfectly by Arthur Johnson, the strong safety. Shula pumped it, now lets it go deep for Greg Richardson, and double coverage incomplete. And Greg argues a bit, but gets no call. So did Bell. See, they're trying to argue their case now. They want the flag to fly. They want to pass interference. They know they're in a jam, tight fit situation. 13 seconds remain. A flag here would be the biggest break they could get. No, oh, that's good coverage. Good coverage. Everybody's going for the ball. Chip Powell was going up for the interception. Third and 10 and 13 seconds. I don't know that this would go down as much of an upset, though, because these two teams are pretty well matched coming in. Auburn 8 and 2 and Alabama 9 and 2. Schuler running away from the pressure. Look out, he's over the line of scrimmage. You can't throw it. He goes out of bounds and stops the clock with six seconds to play in the game. And this will put LSU in the Sugar Bowl against Nebraska, which you will see here on ABC New Year's Day. Talking to Van Tiffin yesterday, I said, last year's 52-yard field goal looks like it'd be good for 70. He said, I don't know if I could have kicked it 70 yards. He said, but it would have been good from 60. <laughs> right now, they're on the 40. They only have six seconds left. Ball is on the 40-yard line. Fourth down and one, Alabama, and six ticks on the clock. It's hard to keep your composure in a time like this when you're in the middle of the melee on the sidelines. But the defensive people were called to the sidelines by Pat Dye. The offensive people called to their sidelines by Ray Perkins. They have now made their de decision on what they'll try to do on the last play of the game. I'll tell you what they're going to. I'll tell you what they're going to do. It's too far for a field goal. Another pass. If it doesn't score, time will run out. So they're going to go for the home run ball. Just throw it down deep. Hope for the deflection. At least that's what I do. I don't know what else you can do. Arthur Johnson is playing center field along with Carlo Cheatham. So there are two of them way back down on the 15-yard line. Mike Shula gets it away. And it's in the crowd. And it is batted down. And Auburn has won the ball game. Meeting Alabama 21-17. And the Tigers finish their season at 9 and 2. Alabama finishes their regular season at 9 and 3. Alabama having played last August in the Football Foundation Hall of Fame game up in Netherlands. So the Tigers of Auburn win it by four. And I am sure that is 
is getting quite a response in Battle Rouge. Once again, your final score, Auburn 21 and Alabama 17.